Good afternoon, Saints. Good afternoon. I want to do a week off. Back now. You know, even Jesus had to get away sometime and rest. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. In this new season here, after the holiday season, we want to um, talk about a few things that are written in the book of Duke around me that I think a lot of the saints don't realize that everything that God said is true. And when uh, Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, he said the first verse, Now it shall come to pass, if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God, to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today, that the Lord your God will set you on high above all nations of the earth. And uh, is that true today too? Yes. Is true. God's words true today, what he said in Deuteronomy 28th chapter? Mm -hmm. Even though it was under the law? Yes, it's true. It's true. Mm -hmm. One thing that the more you walk with the Lord, you find out that he does not change. It also says in that 28th chapter, the 15th verse, it shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will come upon you and overtake you. So as we stand here today, in this healing class, the blessings and the curse is still in effect. Amen? Amen. Once he's spoken into existence, it's, it's here. Because we live in a cursed world. We know the world is cursed from what Adam did, right? Amen. So if he said that if you don't obey his voice, you're cursed. If you do obey it, you're blessed. Amen. So, that's where we get all our blessings from today by obeying God, what he said for us to do. Right. And what people don't realize that if they're not with the Lord, they're under the curse. That's right. And there's a whole list of curses in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, starting at the, about the 15th verse, you read down. And once you read through there, you'll realize that some of them curses are on you. And they shouldn't be. Right? right. If you're with the Lord, they shouldn't be. Now, if you're not with, if you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, anything can happen to you that's written in this book of the law. Now, what I want to look at tonight is one verse, uh, Deuteronomy 28, 28. What we're going to be doing is going through the book of Deuteronomy and looking at these verses, and then we're going to go to the Word of God and give you examples of what happened in Israel's life, the children of Israel's life, when they did not obey God. Amen? Amen. And we'll give you what happened when they do. But right now, we want to look at verse 28, 28. It says, the Lord will strike you with madness and blindness and confusion of heart. We have people that have lost their mind today. Madness. Blindness. They can't, their mind is blinded so that they can't even hear the good news. Amen? Amen. And confusion of heart. Now, when I looked in the the different translations in the translation uh, CSB it said the Lord will afflict you with madness blindness and mental confusion I said well that explains why a lot of people are mentally confused you can tell them something and they just don't believe it 
Because they're not with the Lord. See, when you're with the Lord, you take His Word seriously. You take all His words seriously. The Old Testament and the New Testament. Amen? Now, what we're going to look at here is um, God's first anointed king of Israel. What happened to him? Because he didn't obey the voice of God. Amen? Let's pray, Father. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for all your goodness. We thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and was buried and rose the third day according to the Scriptures. We thank you for your gift of your Holy Spirit that leads and guides us into all truth. I pray, Heavenly Father, that you will lead and guide me tonight as I expound on this subject in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. The reason why. I believe I was led to this because when you're talking to people and they have some kind of ailment on them and you're telling them, you know, what you should be doing, you should be listening to your doctor, amen, because you come to the medical profession to get diagnosed, right? That's right. And they, you know, do all the blood tests and all the screening on you and all of that and they find out that you might have high blood pressure, you might have diabetes, amen, you might have uh, other ailments, arthritis, there's, there's a whole list of them, amen, and what the doctor, he will tell you, you know, the, the medicine you should be taking and how you should be taking it, and different things in your life that you need to stop doing. That's correct. <laughs> Just like God tells us, there's certain things in our life that we ought not be doing. That's right. When you become a child of God, but you know, we are children, we learn by experience, and we do some, keep doing some of the things, and then when we uh, get afflicted, we cry out to the Lord, and He saves us. Like you know, he saves us, but there is consequences right. behind what you do. And here in uh, 1 Samuel, the 16th chapter, this is uh, King Saul. God anointed him king over Israel. Amen. 16th chapter of 1 Samuel. The verse that really pulls this out is verse uh, 14. It says, But the Spirit of the Lord depart, departed from Saul. And a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. I meant to say this is Saul was the first king of Israel. Right? Now I'm going to say Samuel, right? When you said go to first Samuel. Okay, first Samuel. You said Saul. Okay, Saul. First King of Israel. So it tells us here, uh, read that out, Amplify. I like the way that puts it. In the 16th um, chapter. The 16th chapter, 14 verse. It reads as follows. Now the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented and terrified him. So. This is a true story. This is what actually happened to that king because he didn't obey the Lord. So when we go back to the 15th chapter, it gives you all the insight on what God told him to do. Amen. Told uh, him to, uh, you know, get rid of that Amalite, Amalites. Kill everybody. And then when you get down to the 22nd verse, it tells you how Saul got rejected as king. The 22nd verse, it says, So Samuel said, As the Lord has great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed 
than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and adultery. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he also has rejected you from being king. So when we reject the word of the Lord, we, we know the word of the Lord. We have the Old and the New Testament. Amen. Right. We know them, but when we reject the word of the Lord, right. he rejects us. That's right. And it says, and Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. Amen. How many times have we said that when we know we have done something and get caught? We don't actually say it until we get caught. You don't realize you've been caught till you get caught. And then it says, Then Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord and your words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. So he didn't want to take blame for it. He said, because of the people. You know, when you catch somebody in something they say well how about so and so they doing the same thing right blame somebody you know they throw it off it says now therefore please pardon my sin and return with me that i may worship the lord but samuel said to saul i will not return with you for you have rejected the word of the lord and the lord has rejected you from becoming king over Israel. That's right. So go back to the 16th chapter. And we're going to see what happened when the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. It says in uh, that 13th verse, the verse before that, it says, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren, and the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. Right. From that day forward, so Samuel arose and went to Ramah, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, mm -hmm. and a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. Now, I know a lot of people say, once saved, always saved. It's torn, mm -hmm. But here in this Bible, it says if you don't obey the word of God, you take a chance of being out of fellowship with God. Amen? Now, if you look at the 18th chapter of 1 Samuel, I could say one thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. You know the thing about that, he was not like David. When David saw that he sinned, he We don't get to all that. We don't get to all that. He blamed somebody else, like you said. Yeah. So, Saul didn't take accountability right. for his That's sin. What, I was just and so many people don't sin. take accountability for their sin. Right. We're gonna see the contrast between Saul and David. That's why he was so well, what I'm building here, I'm telling the story of once the Spirit of the Lord departs from you, you have mental confusion. You actually have madness, blindness, and mental confusion. Well, he, he did have it. He, he had all that. He, he didn't have sense enough to repent. Amen. So when you look at the 18th chapter of 1 Samuel, the 12th verse, it says, Now Saul was a friend of David, because the Lord was with him, but had departed from Saul. And then when you go to the 19th chapter, the 9th verse, 1 Samuel 19th chapter, the 9th verse, it says, when the distressing spirit from the Lord came upon Saul as he sat in his house with his spear in his hand, and David was playing music with his hands, then Saul 
sought to pin David to the wall with his spear, but he slipped away from Saul's presence, and he drove the spear into the wall. So David fled and escaped at night. See, what happened when this distressing, distressing spirit would come upon Saul, he would call for David to play for him. And you can see that as this story progressed. But due to our time limit, I'm just giving you a summary. Now, actually, Saul got so bad so distressed and so mentally confused in the 28th chapter. Go over to the first Samuel of the 28th chapter. Because this is what people do when they are mentally confused. They'll do anything to overcome this sickness rather than repenting. <laughs> you know, this is what makes it so um, so pitiful that when somebody does something, all they have to do is repent and take responsibility for what they did. Amen? Repent and confess that sin and God will forgive you. Now in this 28th chapter, there was a lot going on here. This is when Saul consults a medium, a witch. He actually went to a witch. And you know we have people like that today. When they're trying to find their way through this world, they will consult witches. Amen? Soothsayers. Somebody to tell him what's happening, amen? So here in the 15th verse it says, and Samuel, and Sam, okay, let's go back. Let's go back here. Let's go back a little bit in this 28th chapter. And I, well, I guess we start at the 15th verse. It says, this is when the, the medium had, you know, Saul wanted the medium to raise Samuel from the dead. Amen? They were doing stuff like that back then. It says in the 15th verse, and Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? And Saul answered, I am deeply distressed, for the Philistines made war against me, and God has departed from me and does not answer me anymore, neither by prophet nor by dreams. Therefore, I have called you that you may reveal to me what I should do. And Samuel said, So why do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you and has become your enemy? And the Lord has done for himself, as he spoke by me, for the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to your neighbor David, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord, nor execute his fierce wrath on Am Amalek, Amalek, Therefore, the Lord has done this thing to you this day. So he basically told him the same thing, that you didn't obey the voice of the Lord. Now we know that David went through some things too. Amen? When he went into Bathsheba and had her husband killed, tried to cover it up, Amen. And then Nathan the prophet came to him and told him about, you know, that the Lord knows about it. You know? And see, this is what we're here to tell you tonight, that the Lord knows what you are doing. But here's what David did in Psalm 51. 
here's what he he had a prayer of repentance. See, you know that makes a big difference in your life. When you have missed it, when you have fell short, when you have sinned and done something, not followed the voice of the Lord, and just been stubborn and all of that and rebellious. And you don't and you repent. Now here in Psalm 51, verse 10, it says, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. David had the spirit of God upon him. Amen? Because when it departed from Saul, the spirit of God was on David. And he said, Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of my of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Then I will teach transgressors their your ways, and sinners shall be converted to you. So we went all the way through that to tell you that there is a way out. Even in the Old Testament, there was a way out. Repentance. Now, in Habakkuk, the first chapter of Prophet says something. Matter of fact, Habakkuk 1 5, it says, Look among the nations and watch. Be utterly astonished, for I will work a work in your days which you would not believe, though it were told you. Kind of like where we're at today, right? We're telling people that there is a way out, right? Now, Galatians, the third chapter. The 13th verse says, this is why it's so important to be in Christ. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That's what happens when you become a believer. You are promised to have the Holy Spirit in your life. And we see that by the Spirit being in your life, that He guides and leads you into all truth. Like the Spirit was on David, and He had He, he led and guided him into repentance, a prayer of repentance. And even though Saul had the Spirit of God in his life, he would not repent. He was blaming other people for what he did. So it's a, it's, a, it's a big difference than repenting and not repenting. And this is where this mental confusion comes in at. Because when you're out of fellowship with the Lord, you're in mental confusion. And if you haven't never repented and believed the gospel, you are basically afflicted with madness, blindness, and mental confusion. It's in your life. That's just a few of them. There's other curses that are on you, too. You're under the curse. You're not under the blessing. You're under the curse. Because the way you get redeemed from the curse is through Christ. He, he redeemed us from the curse of the law. Now, in Acts, the second chapter, the 33rd verse, because I'm going to run it on down to you here. This is uh, what happened in, the, in uh, the day of Pentecost, you know, when the Holy Spirit entered the earth's atmosphere and fell upon everybody in the upper room. And Peter was, you know, talking to the people, explaining that he, they wasn't drunk. Amen? 
He said, therefore, being exalted to the right hand of God and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he poured out this which you now see and hear. That's what they were observing, the Holy Spirit been poured out on all them people. Then in verse 38, he says, Then Peter said to them, Repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 39, For the promises on you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. So, once you get in Christ, amen? You know, because, you know, we're all going to be, a, the devil, he ain't going to change his tactics. He's going to still try to afflict you with something and put different thoughts in your mind and all of that. But you have to keep saying, Christ has redeemed me from the curse of the law. Amen? You have to say that to yourself. He has redeemed me. Amen? Because Christ is my Lord. The devil is not my Lord anymore. Jesus Christ is my Lord. And I have remission of sins. And I have received the gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen? And when you have the Holy Spirit with you, you're, you're, you're actually, whatever confusion that you have in your mind, mental confusion, it has been done away with. Any kind of madness, any kind of blindness. I mean, you can see clearly the light there. Amen? When you don't have this madness, you know, like some people, you know, just... Go off the rails when somebody says to them something to them. You know, when they tell them the truth, they they want to fight you. Amen? They want to be argumentative, confrontational, all of that. Madness. Because their mind has been blinded by Satan. He has blinded their mind. Because they have never received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Now you know what the scripture says in Romans 10. That if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that you will be saved. Amen. It's all about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's, you know, we celebrated that Sunday. It wasn't just Easter Sunday with Easter bunnies and Easter eggs and all that stuff. It was about you remembering what Christ did for you. He rose from the dead. He he he. His body was whooped, beat, and whooped. He 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 has some stripes on his body. Amen. And by his stripes we are healed. They put a crown of thorns on his head, and the chastisement of our peace was upon him. That's how we get our peace. And he died for our sins. And he rose the third day according to the scriptures. Now in Acts 5.32 it says, And we are his witnesses of these things. And so... Also is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. This is how you can say this boldly and believe it in your heart that you know he has risen. You haven't seen him, but you know he has risen because the Holy Spirit is bearing witness with your spirit that this is true. And you see the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Amen. Bringing all scriptures to remembrance and God leading you in all truth and, and comforting you, giving you peace. You have a peace of mind. Amen? Amen. Now, in the 11th chapter of Acts, they call 
Peter on the carpet, the brothers in Jerusalem, when he was down there with the Gentiles eating and drinking and preaching and carrying on. And he said, uh, here's what he told them in the 15th verse, the middle chapter of Acts 15 verse. And as I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them as upon us at the beginning. Then I remembered the words of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, go with me to the 13th chapter of Acts. This is Paul actually on his first missionary journey. Because without God, you can do nothing. This is plain and simple as that. It ain't no sense in me telling you anything else that you can keep on sinning and keep on doing what you're doing and nothing's going to happen. Something is going to happen. Amen. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Sin pays, and the wages are high. Amen. It pays a high price to sin. Now here in the 13th chapter, this is Paul on his first missionary journey. In the 41st verse of this 13th chapter, he says, Behold, you despisers, Marvel and perish, for I work a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, though one were to declare it to you. That's kind of like what the prophet said in Habakkuk 1 5. You know, you, we're going to keep telling you the same thing over and over. We're not going to change God's word to uh, compromise with your lifestyle. What's going to have to happen, you're going to have to change your lifestyle to get in line with God's word. Because if you don't, you're just going to perish. Now, let's read a few verses before that. 41st uh, verse. Let's go up to the 26th verse. This is uh, Paul talking because he had went to the synagogue and they, you know, after he read the law and the prophets, they said, well, if you got something to say, you don't say it. Amen? Why did they want to do that? And uh, <laughs> the 26th verse, it says, Men and brothers, son of the family of Abraham, and those among you who fear God, to you the word of this salvation has been sent. For those who dwell in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not know him, nor even the voice of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, have fulfilled them in condemning him. And though they found no cause for death in him, they asked Pilate that they should be put to that he should be put to death. Now, when they had fulfilled all that was written concerning him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in the tomb. But God raised him up from the dead. He was seen of many days by those who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem who are his witnesses to the people. And we declare to you, glad tidings, that promise which was made to our fathers, God has fulfilled this for us, their children, and that he has raised Jesus, raised up Jesus, as is also written in the second Psalm, for you, you are my son, today I have begotten you, and that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption. He has spoken thus, I will give you the sure mercies of David. Praise God. Therefore, he also said in another psalm, I will not allow your Holy One to see corruption. 
For David, after he has served our generation by the will of God, fell asleep, was buried with his fathers, and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up saw no corruptions. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through his, but that through this man is preached to you forgiveness of sin. And by him, everyone who believes is justified from all things which could not be justified by the law of Moses. You see how you see how this all goes together. This is this is how none of the curses come on the child of God. It says, "Beware, lest what has been spoken in the prophets come upon you. <laughs> Behold, you despisers, marvel and perish, for a work." a work in your days, a work which you will by no means believe, though one were to declare it to you. So this prophecy has kind of been fulfilled today. Amen? So what needs to happen to a child of God, they need to continually meditate in the word of God, and they need to put God's word first in their life, and then the devil can't trip you up with a lie. He can't, he can't trip you up saying that, you know, if you do this thing, nothing's going to happen. You know, that's how he deceived Eve in the garden. He said, no, you ain't going to die. You just be as God. You know the difference between good and evil. Well, that's really what the battle is between good and evil. Amen. And the child of God knows that that's why a child of God can get along with anybody. They can have peace with any culture. Amen? Because they're not looking at flesh and blood. How somebody looks, what color their skin is, and all of that, or where they came from, or where they live. Amen? Amen. It's not about those stuff. It really isn't. That's why they don't look. And this is one way that you can get rid of this uh, mental confusion. Right. In Romans, the eighth chapter, the fifth verse it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. Right. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Now here's the revelation. Your mind is your mind. Amen? And God is not going to control your mind. But what he will do once you become a child of God, he will help you. Because the Holy Spirit is called a helper. Amen? He will help you control your mind. Amen? And the devil cannot make you do anything. He can't control your mind. He has no control over your mind. You're the only one that controls your mind. And it's very important to know this. This is for revelation. Because if you set your mind on the world and fleshly things, carnal things, you're going to reap death. It's death. But if you set your mind on spiritual things, you're going to reap life and peace. And then he also says in that 8th chapter, the ninth verse, he says, But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you, now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. So if the Lord is not in you, you don't have the spirit of Christ, and you're not none of God's. Amen? So you put yourself in a whole different category than a child of God. And this is why a lot of people have this mental confusion that they believe that there's all different kind of ways to get to God, but there's not. There's only one way to get to God, and that's through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. 
That's the only way to get the copy. This, this verse reads a little bit more. Yeah. What does yours say to that ninth verse? However, you are not living in the flesh, controlled by the sinful nature, mm -hmm. but in the spirit. If in fact the spirit of God lives in you, directing and guiding you. But if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he does not belong to him and is not a child of God. Not a child of God. Now jump down to the 26th verse of the 8th chapter of Romans. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. For right. we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. Right. But the Spirit himself makes intercessions for us according to groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is. Amen. Because he makes intercessions for the saints according to the will of God. You have to watch what you, you, you set your mind on. Well, if you're minding things of this world and you're carnal minded and your flesh and all of that, you, you don't have your mind set on the right thing. And see, uh, this is hard for a lot of uh, people to pick up because nobody has never saw the mind. Yeah, you do have a brain, you have an organ. That's part of your organ, just like you have a heart, which is an organ. But the mind you have never seen, as nobody never seen, and also the spirit, your spirit, nobody has never seen. Amen? But you have to realize that you are a spirit, you possess a soul, which is another name for the mind, and you live in this body which you do see. So if you mind the things of what's going on in this world, you're going to reap death. But if you mind the things of the Spirit, the Word, what the Word of God is really telling you the truth, and you're praying to God in the Spirit, it says that the Spirit will actually help you. Amen? So if you set your mind on things of the Spirit, God will help you. He has a, we have a helper called the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And when you mess up, you repent. Because a lot of times you don't realize you're messing up. And you know, a lot of times, what, so, you know, with us, since we're in the flesh, and we're just beginning to get a, a grasp on what God's Word is really saying, and right now there's so many interpretations out of God's Word, and all of that, and so many different people saying so many things, what I try to do, I keep it simple. I don't add to God's word, and I don't take away from it. Amen? And this passage in uh, 1 Samuel with Saul is a great uh, illustration that, that how the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and a distressing spirit, from the Lord troubled him because he did not obey the voice of God. He did not obey the, the word. So if you are a child of God and you're not obeying the, the word of God and you are habitually sinning over and over and over again, it tells us this even in Ephesians that you will not inherit the kingdom of God or Christ. And I think a lot of Christians need to know that that if you're out here saying that sin is not sin and, you, and you're committing it, you are putting yourself in dangerous territory. And the reason I know that they have some mental problems, mental confusion, because nobody in their right mind would do something over and over again and expect different results. No good's going to come from it. Only thing you're doing, you're satisfying your flesh, right? When you're sinning, you're satisfying your flesh. We're going to leave that to you to meditate on and think about. It's probably, it's probably going to be a part two on this. Because so many people are mentally ill. They are confused. And you know, the more I talk to people, 
You know, they could be right up in church with you, and then once you start talking to them, you'll see that their mind is set on, on fleshly things, on the world. And it's not set on spiritual things. You mention spiritual things to them, and they don't even know what you're talking about. Right in church. So that leads to the conclusion, are you saved or are you not? We all need to examine ourselves and come to the realization that you can't keep committing sins because in Saul's case, this didn't happen to him all at once. Samuel kept coming to him and said, this is what the Lord told you to do. Amen? Amen. And he didn't do it. He gave him chance after chance. Y'all have a good night.